Alright guys, today we're going to be doing the thrilling 32 ranking list of different amusement rides and rankings of parks and stuff like that. So let's get right into it. Alright, so first up, we're going to talk about what my favorite park is, and it's Cedar Point. I mean, you have great li rides like um, Millennium Force, Top Thrill Dragster, Maverick, Steel Vengeance, even though I haven't been on it yet. And other supporting rides like Gatekeeper, Valraven, Raptor, and Rougarou. They're all great. And for the next spot, next thing, we've got most anticipated new ride for 2021. And this ride is, of course, Iron Gwazi. I love RMC. This looks like one of their best creations yet. It's over 200 feet, um, a ton of fast elements, good pacing. Looks like easily the best ride of 2021. Now, we're going to get into my rankings, and we're going to start with my top 10 wood coasters. So what I did was I did top 10 wood, and I also did top 20 steel, since obviously I've been on more steel. Um, for number 10, we've got Sea Breeze. At, um, we got Sea Breeze for the park. And Jackrabbit for the coaster. This is a good coaster. Delivers some good airtime. Um, really nothing much else to it besides airtime, but delivers some good airtime. And then um, next we've got Kennywood, and its coaster is Jackrabbit as well. And this, I feel like, is a slightly stronger version just because of that double down. That double down's pretty crazy. The rest of the ride is, well, kind of like the other Jackrabbit, but at our number eight spot, we've got Luna Park's Cyclone. This is actually a pretty intense ride. Um, twister layout with some okay airtime, but good laterals, a little rough, but that's okay. And then at number seven, we've got um, Fantasy Island's Silver Comet, another twister layout, but... I think this is slightly better than the Cyclone. Um, just a bit longer, I feel like, a bit better elements. And at number six, we've got another Kennywood roller coaster, and this is um, Thunderbolt. Now, this ride uses the terrain a lot, which I love that about it. And it has some pretty good airtime as well. Um, obviously, that helix at the end is pretty intense. So it gets number six. Number five is kind of an upset. It's Cliff's New Mexico Rattler. This is actually a very underrated ride. It has some great laterals, good air time, and lo decently long ride. It's a little rough, I know, but still, it's a great ride. And number four, we've got multiple <laughs> gold ticket award winning Boulder Dash, I don't know if it deserves all those Golden Ticket Awards, but it's still a great ride. Um, great terrain setting in the mountains, great airtime, it's a great ride. Number three, we got what well, like the slightly better version of Boulder Dash, I think, which is Waldemere's Ravine Flyer 2. Um, really what did it for me was those two airtime hills over the road. Those deliver some great airtime and are my two favorite parts of the ride. The other parts of the ride are really good, too. And at number two, we've got Knobles Phoenix, which, again, has golden ticket awards. I don't know if it deserves them or not, but it's a great ride. It's my number two. Great airtime. It doesn't have much else, but the airtime's really nuts with that buzz bar and nothing else. And at number one is, of course, El Toro. What else would it be unless I've ridden Lightning Rod? It's intense, fast, smooth, great airtime. Um, yeah, just a really great ride, El Toro. So now we're going to move on to my top 20 steel coasters. And these are 20 great rides, all in my top 25 overall. So at number 20, we have Cedar Point's Gatekeeper. This is actually a really good wing coaster. And I actually find it kind of intense. Like, a lot of people knock this for being forceless. It's not that forceless. Um, 19, 
We have Superman at Six Flags America. And this is, in my opinion, the more forceless version of the one at um, Darien Lake. But still a great ride, good air time. Um, obviously, those helixes are pretty intense. And at number 18, we've got Millennium Force. Now, I feel like this is kind of forceless. Um, so has uh, some good laterals, but it mainly focuses on just speed, keeping speed, which is great, but when you don't have the best air time and not best transitions, then it's not going to be quite as high as all the Golden Ticket Awards suggest. Um, number 17, we got Superman at New England. Great layout. Great airtime in the first half. Great transitions in the second half with more great airtime. This is at 17 because of those u brick lap bars. These are my least, fa well, least favorite lap bars I've um, experienced. These things really kill your legs, but it still ranks 17, even with the u bricks because of how good the layout is. And number 16, we've got Storm... Um, We've got Great Bear, not not Storm. We've got Hershey Park's Great Bear, great inverted coaster, easily my favorite. Better than Raptor, better than the Batman's. This thing's intense, fast, unique. Um, obviously that great roar, good setting. Yeah, love it. Um, Fifteen, we've got Cedar Point's Top Thrill Dragster. This thing's the definition of short but sweet. It's it's over in 17 seconds, but really fast launch. Best launch I've experienced. And then that top hat's amazing, especially looking out over the peninsula. And then that drops insane as well. It's too bad it's over like that, but um, what Cedar Point had to work with with just that long rectangle, rectangular space, it's really good. And 14, now we've got Hershey Park Storm Runner. This thing's fast, um, a bit longer than Top Little Dragster. That's why I gave it the edge, even though the top hat and the launch aren't quite as good. It has that um, flying snake dive that's really good. It has a couple extra elements, which push it ahead of Top Little Dragster. And this is a really great ride. At number 13, we've actually got Full Throttle at Six Flags Magic Mountain. This, I get it, um, the drop, it ends right after the drop, but I, I just look at everything else at, at, um, before that drop. The loop delivers such good hang time. Um, it's pretty fast. That backwards launch is kind of cool, and you do get some air time over the top hat. It just, yeah, I could use a couple extra elements at the end to boost its ranking. And number 12, now we've got Ride of Steel at Darien Lake. This ride has easily the better setting. I personally think it's more intense. I don't know why. It just is more intense, better airtime. And overall, I tend to get better rides on this than the other one. At 11, we've got Canada's Wonderland's Behemoth. This thing's a great flo floater air time based ride. Um, that being said, no ejector, so it loses points there, but great floater air time. All BNM hypers have that, and this is no exception. It delivers the air time. It's long. It has kind of that twister section. I don't know how I feel about that, um, but yeah. And number 10. We got Six Flags Magic Mountains Goliath. Now, I know a lot of people like to hate on this ride for being forceless and not having any airtime, but I'm here to say that, that it does have airtime. It's not forceless. That first drop in the first airtime hill delivers some good airtime there. Not BNM hyper class, but great airtime still. And after that, you've got very intense Helix, um, potentially gray out. It's really intense, really fast. And I know Titan has an upward one, so I'd like to get on that. And, yeah, just a very underrated ride. And at number nine, 
We've got Six Flags Magic Mountains Tatsu. And this thing is easily my favorite flying coaster. I've only been on two B&M flying coasters and a couple Valairs and Vacoma. But this is easily the best. I mean, it's really intense. That pretzel loop just tries to rip your head off. And it's also that zero-G rolls good. The drop, I mean... It's easily the biggest outside of Japan with Flying Dinosaur, but I love Tatsu. And number eight, we've got Kennywood's Phantom's Revenge. This ride actually has the second drop that's bigger than the first drop. However, I don't think it has quite as good as airtime as some people make it out to have, but it's still really great airtime. Um, that turn's actually kind of intense. And yeah, good ride from um, Fam's Revenge. And then at number seven, we've got Leviathan at Canada's Wonderland. This thing's fast, but it also has the airtime, which is something Millennium Force lacks, and is the reason Leviathan is way ahead of it. It has the speed and the airtime combined. It also has the better first drop, and it's really good ride, well rounded. And then at number six, we've actually got Six Flags Great Adventures Nitro. This thing is actually better than Leviathan. It has just as good of a first drop, I feel like. The airtime, I feel like, is even better because it's made for airtime. But even that upward helix is really intense, like even more intense than Goliath's. And then the run of airtime hills at the end is really great. A ton of airtime there. I feel like Nitro, even if I got around to rides like Mako and Diamondback, this would be my favorite hyper coaster by B&M. And at number five, we've actually got um, Hershey Park Sky Rush. This thing is really intense, and I got to say the um, thigh crush restraints aren't nearly as bad as the u bricks, and they're uncomfortable, but they're not that bad. You can forgive them for the intensity and the airtime that this thing has. Um, all those laterals and transitions are really good. Um, those two first airtime hills are insane and great ride there. Number four, we've got Six Flags Magic Mountains X2. This thing is basically a bigger version of the free spin. Um... It's not a free spin, really. It's a controlled flipping, but still, it's really good. That drop just is nuts, facing 200 feet down, flipping, going down, and then all the different elements after. Even that airtime hill is really good. And, yeah, just pure chaos is this ride. So at number three is also from Six Flags Magic Mountain. And this is Twisted Colossus. Um, I love all RMC rides. Um, I've only been on two, but they're really great. And Twisted Colossus is no exception to the two RMCs I've been on. Um, it duels. That gives it a lot of bonus points. It was dueling when I was there. And, it, I mean, that break in the middle kind of buzzkill, but not really, since it builds up more anticipation. And that first drop's great. Um, that hill right after is okay. But then that high five element's phenomenal. And then the drops are okay. And then you go into that Top Gun stall. And that's nuts if you're on the green side especially. And then the blue side will go into an inversion. Um, a corkscrew. And basically the green side will do an airtime hill. And then a couple more hills. And then if you're on blue side, you're going to go into green side. And then if you're on green side, you're going to go into brakes. So it's a nice long ride. Definitely feels long, is long. And all those elements are great. And now we're at number two, which is that second RMC I was talking about. And that's Wicked Cyclone. This thing, that third half kind of hot... Um, and goes kind of slow through the course, but that first half, that drop is nuts. 
and that speed hill right after the turn is insane. That stall is really good, best stall I've been on. And then that double down is probably the best part of the ride. Insane airtime right there. And then all the hills after are really great, even in the third half, or third, third. And then that slow inversion as well is really cool. Every part of this ride is really good. And at our number one spot, it's not Steel Vengeance because I haven't ridden it yet, but Maverick takes the number one spot still. And this is just such a great ride, such a great blitz coaster. Obviously it has a great first half with the great airtime hills delivering some of the best ejector and those corkscrews that deliver some great whip. And then in that second half, you just fly out of that tunnel with a ton of speed, 70 miles per hour about. And then you just fly up into a hill and you go into what used to be a zero G roll, but was too intense. So they took it out for a turn, but still really intense. And then, and then that stangle dive is really intense as well. And then all of the other transitions, turns, laterals, our airtime hills are all phenomenal, 10 out of 10. So that's the thrilling 32. Um, you, could, you guys could go vote now if you want. There's other stuff besides just that. Like you could vote to 75 in wood and steel. And you could also vote for other stuff besides just parks and most anticipated new rides. So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure to subscribe for more content like this, and we'll see you guys next time.